वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स टू द नाइन्थ वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री सम बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट द हेडिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर टुडे इज अ वेरी जनरलाइज वन वेयर वी टॉक अबाउट द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक रिएक्शंस वी हैव क्लासिफाइड देम इनटू सिक्स कैटेगरीज आइसोमराइजेशन रीअरेंजमेंट कंडेंसेशन एलिमिनेशन सब्सटीट्यूशन and addition reactions we are not going to deal with them in detail because it becomes a very lengthy topic what we are doing under this heading is to understand the basic differences between these various types of organic reactions so taking them one by one divided it into six categories six different colors so that it's easier for you to recall please concentrate on understanding rather than noting the points written over here because you will get them easily in the on the website learning chemistry is fun we first come to the first category isomerization iso means same mer means molecular formula molecule in other words isomerization are those type of organic reactions wherein the compound the organic compound gets converted into its isomers now these isomers can be structural they can also be stereo isomers this type of organic reaction is very common in converting alkanes to their corresponding isomers in the petroleum industry we've taken a very simple example over here we've got 1 2 3 4 5 so it's an n pentane which when heated in the presence of platinum gets converted into 1 2 3 4 so this is a butane so 2 methyl butane or 1 2 3 so this is propane 2 2 dimethyl propane is are the two forms or are the two isomers of pentane of a straight chain pentane rearrangement rearrangement is a typical type of isomerization wherein movement of atom or groups takes place within the molecule to give us a more stable structure sometimes you will find the heading isomerization or rearrangement clubbed under one no need to get confused we are talking about the same thing only over here rearrangement is we are taking a very simple example hoffman bromamide reaction although you will not come across these type of reactions very often in your study up till class 12 but uh, just to have a basic understanding where we have an amide a primary amide when heated with bromine in the presence of an alkali alcoholic alkali what we get over here is an amine our final end product is an amine during the course of the reaction we have listed a few steps not all i have listed a few steps over here just to make you understand the amide undergoes reaction with bromine giving us the substituted product the substituted product loses bromine to give you a, an unstable intermediate here a rearrangement takes place within the molecule itself so if you notice over here r c o n and this has lone pair of electrons so movement of the alkyl group takes place within the molecule that is why we are using the word intra intra means within so the movement of the alkyl group takes place within the molecule to give us an isocyanate which is a more stable product this isocyanate of course undergoes hydrolysis with the alkali to give us R NH2, which is a primary amine. This is a very important reaction in organic compounds, but you need to concentrate on the basics right now. Third category of reaction: condensation. Condensation. You would relate it to water, right? When moisture from the air condenses onto the glasses. So what is happening is simple. It's a simple phenomena where simple molecule is being formed. condensation 
two or more organic molecules join together to give you a single molecule either by releasing a simple molecule like water, ammonia, alcohol or not releasing a simple molecule. That means two or more molecules can either combine to give you a single molecule without releasing any simple molecule or by releasing a simple molecule like water, ammonia, alcohol. Here we have taken both examples that means an example of aldol condensation so aldol comes from the word alcohol and aldehyde so our resulting product has an aldehyde group and an alcoholic group so aldol is the name of the product form two molecules of acetaldehyde undergo condensation to give you a molecule of aldol the details of this reaction you shall do when you are doing the topic aldehydes. Taking the second example, esterification, wherein an alcohol reacts with a carboxylic acid in the presence of concentrated H2SO4 to give us a product which is known as ester. These are the sweet smelling compounds that you will observe when you do chemical tests in the laboratory also. How do we test an alcohol? This is a very, very simple reaction which is used. So an alcohol, when treated with a carboxylic acid, gives us a sweet smelling product that's an ester. So these, this reaction is esterification. If you notice over here, a simple molecule that is water is released as a byproduct. So condensation reaction can, may or may not release a simple molecule. Fourth category of reaction, elimination, eliminate, remove, wherein a simple molecule is removed. Now that simple molecule comprises of two atoms or two groups. Now these two atoms or groups can either be removed from the same carbon atom or two carbon atoms. Those two carbon atoms can be. So let's suppose I remove a functional group from one this first carbon atom. If both the groups are removed from the first carbon atom to which the functional group is attached, we call it as alpha elimination. If on the other hand, we remove one group from alpha and the other from beta, we call it as the beta elimination. Third possibility is we remove one atom from here, atom or group, and the second atom or group is removed from the alpha, from the gamma carbon atom. In that case, it is called as gamma elimination. Beta elimination is further classified as E1 and E2. Unimolecular elimination, bimolecular elimination. What is, what are each of these? We shall be studying as a separate heading to avoid too much of confusion at this stage. So we have loss of two atoms or groups from the same or adjacent carbon atoms is what we call as elimination. I've taken a very, very simple example over here like bromoethane. It loses its H and Br to give us an ethene. So if you notice over here, 1, 2, Br and hydrogen. So hydrogen from here, Br from here gives us a double bond. Two single bonds, that means two sigma bonds get converted into a pi bond. Secondly, hydrogen and bromine belong to adjacent carbon atom. In other words, this is an example of beta elimination. Coming to the third category of reaction, sorry, the fifth category of reactions, that is substitution reactions. Substitution, again classified as nucleophilic, electrophilic, free radical. Substitution, one teacher is absent or busy, the other teacher comes and takes over the class. That's substitution, right? So one atom or group is replaced by another atom or group is what we call as a substitution reaction. Take a very simple example, bromoethane. With aqueous NaOH, here, simple, Br is replaced by OH, giving us a substituted product, which is an alcohol. 
nucleophilic, electrophilic, free radical. These terms are used depending upon whatever is the attacking reagent. If you have seen the previous videos, we've talked about reagents involved. So depending upon whether the initial attack takes place by a nucleophile, by an electrophile or a free radical, we will call it as a nucleophilic substitution or an electrophilic substitution or a free radical substitution. During your course of study, you will be dealing with mechanisms of all of these. That is one, two, three. Nucleophilic substitution is further classified as SN1 or SN2 reaction mechanism. So SN1 stands for nucleophilic substitution wherein the process is unimolecular. SN2 where it is bimolecular. So mechanism of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is part of your study for grade 12. Coming to the sixth category of uh, organic reactions, addition, exactly the reverse of elimination. There you had converted a bromoalkane to an alkene. Here you convert an alkene to a bromoalkane. In other words, you will convert a pi bond to two sigma bond. Addition reactions simply involve the addition of a simple molecule across a multiple bond. Multiple bond could be a double or a triple bond. Again, depending upon what is the attacking reagent, we have nucleophilic addition, electrophilic addition, free radical addition. So you shall be doing the mechanisms, the step-by-step -step mechanisms of each of these as well. Now, I'm not trying to scare you by telling you that you have to do the mechanisms of this, all these. It is just to give you an overview, one. Second, to prepare you mentally. Third, what happens is, many a times we have seen that students, they do the whole of this chapter with a, and at the end of it, they get confused because we are talking about nucleophilic here also and here as well. Electrophilic, electrophilic, free radical, free radical. So we tend to get confused and not just the students now, even I used to get confused as a student. So this overview will help you to keep on tick marking once you have done a reaction mechanism. So once you do E1, just take it off, E2, take it off. So that gives you the confidence that you have gone step by step and you are closer to reaching your goal. If you don't understand, best is to teach it to any of your buddy, any of your friend. If there's no friend around, catch hold of one of your parents to teach this topic. It becomes much, much easier once you teach it to somebody. Wish you all the best. Continue watching more videos.